This week I'll show you how to use masks in Photoshop. Adorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -one, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Welcome to this week's episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -one. Well, in episode 69, I showed you how to do compositing in Photoshop, and since that time, we've seen this question over and over again, and that is, how do I use masks in Photoshop? Well, let me answer that question by showing you what masks do and how you can use them. They're really easy, and it's something that almost anybody can do as long as you have Photoshop. So let's jump right in. At their most basic level, masks allow us to show and hide things on layers. And so I'm going to open my layers palette here and I've really made these thumbnails large so we can see exactly what's going on here. Now I have two layers. I have a layer of Claudia and then uh, the layer below that is just a layer of a uh, picture of a desert. And so I have uh, the layer on top, Claudia, and when I turn that on it hides the layer beneath which is the layer of the desert. Now what I can do is I can create a layer mask. And so what I'll do is I'll shrink this a little bit. Right underneath all of your layers, there are a bunch of buttons. And one of them, if you see right here, it is the layer mask. If I click that, now we have this icon to the right of our layer. And notice that uh, right now it's selected. It's got these four brackets around it. There's this little link right here, this chain link. And then we have our layer. If I click on the layer, Notice that's what's selected. If I click on the mask, that's what's selected. So when you're uh, editing on your layer, make sure that you know if you're editing on the mask or the layer because that can have big impacts. So right now this shows a completely white mask. And what white does is it makes sure that everything is opaque. And in other words, everything shows up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a brush and then down here I have my default colors, so black and white. If you don't have your default colors, then you can just click these little white and black here or just hit the D key and that will make sure those are white and black. Now there is a shortcut I'll be using a lot here and so these little arrows right here I can click that to switch between black as my foreground color or white or the shortcut key is just to hit X. So X uh, will take you back and forth between those and we'll be doing this a lot. So I have my brush and I'm going to uh, get a really nice large brush and so I've really increased the size of that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm clicked on my mask here and I'm going to paint black on the mask. And when I do that, anything that's beneath this layer is going to start showing up where I'm painting. So I'm painting this. Now notice this is a lot different than a clipping path because if we uh, zoom in here, you can see that this edge is soft. And so it's not a hard line like a clipping path, and that's determined by how hard or soft your brush is. So if I go in here, I've got this brush, and I'm going to make it extremely soft. Then I'll go to this area here, and notice now I've got this really, really soft transition here. So that's a really nice thing to use. Also notice that as I'm painting over here on the icon for my mask, now you can see where I've painted black and where I've painted white. And so the black areas that are totally uh, black show completely through. And the white areas uh, uh, make sure everything is totally opaque so nothing shows through. And the other thing that's really nice about masks is that you can, uh, you don't have to choose exactly black or white. You can choose something that's sort of in between. And so what I'll do is I'm going to go to where Claudia's face is here. I'm going to get my brush again. And so I have black. But instead of my opacity being 100%, in other words, absolutely black, I'm going to take that down to something about 60, let's say maybe 70%. And so now as I paint, watch what happens. We can see the stuff behind, but we can also still see some of Claudia's face. Now if I don't like that, here's another advantage of the mask, I can paint over this over and over and over. So right now I've gotten too much of her hair, I don't like that. I can just hit my X key to get white. Then I can go in here, I can paint some white back on. And so now I'm changing how this works. And so I can quickly change from white to black to white to black. I can change opacities. 
and I can change how my layers are uh, blending together. Now this is something that is significantly different than a clipping path because a clipping path it just is everything or nothing and the lines are exactly solid. They're not faded like these are now. Now obviously this is not an effect that we would want but it just helps you understand how masks work. Now let's say I want to uh, make sure her eyes are absolutely uh, opaque so I can shrink my brush. I will go here get a uh, make sure I get a white color and so I've got white, and then I'll also make sure my opacity is set to 100%. Now I can paint those eyes back in. And you can see now that we have all kinds of different combinations of opaque, semi-opaque, and different uh, areas that are painted in and out. The other thing that's really nice is you'll notice that these are non-contiguous. In other words, I've got this mask. I've got some stuff here. I've got some stuff that's uh, not opaque here. I've got different values here. And so it doesn't have to all be um, one or nothing. In other words, you don't have to have one area selected and that's the only thing. You can mix and match and do all kinds of things with a mask. And it really is neat. Now, these can also be applied to other things like effects and other layers on top of this. And one more thing you can do with a mask that is important over here on the right-hand side Notice I have my mask and I have my layer and I have this little link. Now, by the way, if by chance you think you're going to be painting on your mask, you get your brush and you haven't chosen your mask and you start painting. So I'll get my brush and now notice I'm actually painting black and that is being painted right on my layer. So if that happens, just make sure you hit undo or use your undo uh, menu right here, your history, and you can undo all of that stuff. So make sure if, you're, if you want to uh, paint opacity that you click on the mask first. Now one of the other things that's important here is this little link. So if I go here and I uh, grab my, my move tool here and I move this layer, notice the layer moves and then everything I've painted on that also moves as well. And so I can move her over here. You can see I've got this opacity. I can move her wherever I want. And everything just sort of comes along for the ride. Now if I unclick this link, that link goes away and I start moving. Notice now the mask stays and the layer moves. So if you want to unlink the mask and the layer, you can do that. And there's sometimes you might want to do that for something very specific, uh, maybe in some special effects, but you can unlink them, reposition them, and then you can click between there. You can link them together again and now they'll all move together which is pretty cool. Now this is a very exaggerated version of how masks work. So let's look at some uh, a real life example. And so my apologies already to Claudia and to Sam because I've done something crazy here. I have blended Claudia and another model Sam's eyes to give her blue eyes. And I've done some stuff to her skin, but this is a much more realistic uh, use of masks. And so I wanna go in and show you how I did this and this is not something that I really like, but um, we'll use it anyway. So what we're gonna do here is let me show you the different layers. So we have just the eyeballs. So these are blue eyes, and I took these from uh, another model. Her name is Sam. I have this layer of retouched skin, and so this is a glamour portrait retouching trick where you take skin, and I'll just zoom in on this. And so you can see this has got a lot of grain and then it's been blurred. And so we've got that. And then we have just normal Claudia underneath. And so what I wanted to do here is control how these different layers were blended. So I'll make sure we're nice and tight here. So uh, the first thing I did was notice I have this uh, layer mask over here on the skin. Now on the skin, I wanted to have this uh, blur and this noise on Claudia's face but I didn't want it to show up on her lips and her teeth. I didn't want it to show up on her eyes or her hair. I just wanted it to be on the skin. And so I was able to really quickly paint a layer mask. And you can see how this is uh, just on her face and not her mouth. And I was also able to paint some of that away from some of the defining lines uh, around her nose, these shadows. So it gives it a little bit more contrast. And then also I was able to use a layer mask just to pull in some eyes from a different picture. Now this is pretty neat because to get this exactly right, it takes a little bit of fudging. So you can go in there at 100% and I'll grab this. 
So let me get back to 100%. Sorry about that. So I'll grab this. And uh, to make sure that this is painted in exactly, I go to my layer mask. I'll get a very small brush. So I'll shrink this down. And then I am painting using the uh, black to paint out the eyes. But I want them to be painted in. So I can just really delicately go in here and paint exactly where I want this to show up. And then if I make a mistake, whoops, too much, I can switch colors using the X shortcut key, bring that back, and then I can do this very, very delicately, very carefully until I have it exactly where I want it to be and those eyes just pop into place. And that's really what a layer mask is used for. It's for doing things like this where you're uh, really delicately placing different things. I can now make these go away. That's sort of freaky. Um, another thing you can do with a layer mask it doesn't just apply to normal layers. So what I could do is I could go in here and create something on this, an adjustments layer. So I'll create an adjustments layer. Uh, I'll do a, a, a photo filter. And if I click that, we'll go in here. We'll make this a, uh, let's say, a sepia. So it's really, really uh, nice sepia. I'll really exaggerate this. So that's done. Now I can go back in here to my layers and notice that my uh, my photo filter, so my adjustment layer, comes along with a layer mask. So then on that layer mask, I can grab a brush. I can make it really, really large. So I'll make this large. And I can start painting out where I don't want that sepia to be. So I'll bring back the normal natural gray that we had before. And so you can do all kinds of things like this where you can just say, I just want this to apply to one place which is Claudia's face. And when I do that, it makes her look like she's embarrassed. But you get the idea. So you can add and subtract different local adjustments with a layer mask. It's really nice. I'm going to delete that because I don't like it. And the other thing is you can do compositing. Now I showed you this in episode 69 where we had all of these different pictures of Nisha. And I was able to uh, place them uh, one on top of the other. And it made it look like we had a bunch of different people, although it was just one person. Now, one of the things in episode 69 that a lot of people caught was that I accidentally used the wrong uh, layer. And so when I blended it, I accidentally deleted some of Nisha's legs right here. And so make sure that you use the right layer mask or else you can accidentally get rid of something that you don't want to get rid of. And there you have it. Layer masks, you can use them for retouching, special effects, and compositing. Well, as you can see, masks are very powerful tools that you can add to different layers in Photoshop to show and hide different parts of each layer. And uh, as you start working with masks, you'll see that there's something that you just can't live without because they're so powerful. Well, if you have a question about photography or photography gear, please send your questions to me at askmark at adorama.com. And if you want to see past episodes of Digital Photography One-on-One -on -one or find out all about other photography tips and tutorials, zip on over to the Adorama Learning Center. It is just full of all kinds of good stuff. Thanks again for joining me. I'll see you next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Go away. Digital Photography One-on-One -on -one is written and produced by Snap Factory. For more information about our workshops, visit snapfactory.com.